is going on everybody and welcome back to the channel today with another live stream in the evening and I have the comic experts somewhere in between physical, digital and whatever is coming out with Marvel and Vivi in here. So welcome to the stream Sleeping Comics, welcome to the stream Swaggle House. How are you guys doing? Sleeping. Doing great. How Thanks for having me on again. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, this is uh, good to share the screen again once uh, or once again with Sleepin', and it, it's great to be on, on your channel. So uh, this will be a fun conversation. First time for Swaggle House, second time for Sleeping Comics. Actually, all, I think it's already more than a year ago that we had an, a comic talk, which was uh, awesome as well. A lot of um, nerding out about comics. So today we're going to talk, obviously, about um, the bigger elephant in the room, the VV marvel comics release platform but also about physical and digital collecting and um, what your feelings are into in that and i would start this out maybe with you uh, swaggle um collecting you are definitely coming from the physical collectibles otherwise your wall wouldn't look like this so how did you start collect is this a childhood thing or how did you get into collecting marvel comics or was there something else like the the classic pokemon I don't know. Yeah, I, I have a similar story to probably a lot of people that are around my age range. But uh, I, I started collecting when I was, you know, a young kid, around six years old, just to date myself. That was when the uh, Tim Burton Batman movie had come out. If you're familiar with that version of, uh, you know, Batman, uh, and when that happened, there was a huge sort of like comic book boom speculation market that came uh, of that generation, like all these comic book stores popped up. So uh, I probably would have been of this era where my dad took me and my brother to go watch the movie and then like straight out of the theater, like went into a comic book shop. And then from that point, got into, you know, uh, collecting and, and superheroes and all that. And like most people, you know, throughout your life, you kind of go in and out of it over time. You know, you get uh, into other things, you know, as you get older, you uh, play sports, you talk to girls, you do all that stuff. And then sometime later on, when you have money, you uh, decide like, hey, you know, those really expensive comic books that I had in my childhood, I'd love to own those again. And so uh, in my adult life, I started recollecting in sort of a big way and haven't looked back since. So that's kind of my origin with that. Yeah, it's awesome. And I kind of find myself in that story a little bit of the, with the recollecting, like there's a huge gap of not being able to collect and then uh, starting with it again. Uh, Sleepin, um, your way was also buy physical comics first. How did you come into collecting? Uh, similar. I we didn't. I have enough money to buy any comics, so some of my friends did. So I would read their comics <laughs> when I was younger. But then I got a little bit, you know, in my teenage years, and I had, you know, got a little bit more money from working and whatnot, and uh, bought some comics then. But really, wasn't able to have enough disposable income to you know, buy any real comics, even like, you know, $5 ones, um, probably started kind of maybe 10 years ago, a little bit longer, trying to getting back into it. And then of course, uh, over the past three years, I've been kind of more focused on digital collecting. Um, but yeah, it's been a, a fun ride. And, uh, I, 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 my deal is I try to do all aspects of it from, you know, statues to Funko Pops. Although I try to stay away from Funko Pops because I might get too crazy and collect, try and collect all those as well. But I kind of get into everything. So that, you know, whatever it might be, pictures, what you know, posters, whatever it is. That's crazy. Uh, Swaggle, are you also um, collecting more than just comics? Is there, is there more like Funko Pops and stuff like that? I, I have my interests, you know, um, starting to get a little more into like original art stuff. I, I, I like... I like Magic the Gathering, you know, cards and yeah. things like that. But, uh, you know, the problem is, is you, 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 only, you only have so much money, you know, to like <laughs> go for the really big ticket items that you want. So I try not to get too like tunnel visioned or I, I try not to get too like, uh, you know, what, what do you call it? Like head on a swivel and look towards all these things because I know like there's some very expensive comic books I want. So I try to maintain the discipline in, in that in that space. Um, but yeah, I mean. I have what's like, the big comic you're going after these days, Swaggle? Well, you know, I, the, the AF 15 still eludes me. So, you know, that's one that I, I got to get one at, at a certain point. And then some of the like the golden age uh, Captain America is like early ones and things like that. So, so those are those, those would be great to add. So, yeah, any of them would be great. Yeah. 
So you're going after, I see an AF-15 there behind uh, uh, <laughs> sleeping, but uh, yeah. so you're going for a higher grade or is there like something like a car and house on the line? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm okay getting, uh, you know, into, you know, the, the, the low presentable, you know, uh, area, right? Which is um, actually, that's one of the tough things with comics is like, I, I'm not the only one. So the, the buy-in is often very high. Is, is higher proportionally for a lot of those types of comics. And then when you kind of get to like slightly higher, it, it doesn't maintain the same like incremental level. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a, you want to buy into the written, the nice neighborhood, so to speak, you know, and that, that, that has a floor okay. price. Absolutely. Yeah. This and AF 15 presents pretty well, but if you look at the back, it's like all taped up. It's pretty, it's a 1.8. It's kind of a disaster on the back. So, <laughs> but you know, it looks good. It looks good, and you have one um, with with that. Maybe a follow up here also for Swaggle House. When you're collecting um, these comics, what specifically are you, or what appeals you? What are you you're looking for? Because you mentioned before, okay, you read the comics. Also, Sleeping said uh, he read the comics of Friends. So, comic reading is definitely the entry. But in the end, the slabs they are like a cover. They are a status. There is scarcity. There is certainly the hero that plays a role. Like no one wants like the side storyline hero. So what's the like the most important things that you're looking at? Yeah, I would say, you know, in terms of how I operate, and I guess this is true of like the greater comic book market, it, it, it mostly is defined by like key comic books. And usually just over time, the market has identified like, okay, this particular comic book is the first appearance of this character. And it's it's like you would think it would be, you know, the popular characters are popular, Spider-Man and Batman and Superman and X-Men and, you know, whatever character. And that typically is like, okay, yeah, those ones are more expensive. And then you have the other side, which is like the supply side. So how scarce is it? And then how high of quality? And, you know, pull you pull all those levers and that really sort of, you know, determines like how the market sort of operates. Um, and and it's kind of similar for me you know i have my nostalgia and the characters that i love that i like to go for those things or i just appreciate the covers and you know if i could buy the highest grade version of whatever that comic is i'll definitely do that but uh, it's also a matter of like finding the right price you know and, and that, that's something that's a little bit different is you know it's not that you can you, you can't find an a15 it's just that the one sitting on ebay right now is probably more expensive than you should pay for it so there's all those factors to consider. So you go through someone like, is there a network, like find me an AF15 and maybe you get it cheaper than on eBay. Is there something like that? Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, that's networking with other collectors and dealers and, and you go to the, the comic cons and maybe you can find one or, you know, sometimes you, you, you talk to a, your local comic book store, maybe they get one into their you know store because uh, randomly some, person dropped it off or sold it to them. So yeah, you, you kind of have to like get your roots everywhere and, and ask around. Okay. Sleeping, you said, or um, uh, Swagglehouse just said, um, we have the key comics, we have the supply side, but I, I will never forget the video that you, short, uh, that you showed this Thanos comic that is just one in 25 editions. It's a cover variant. Like, uh, I don't know which exact edition it is, but um, you right there. Thanos 13, maybe that one. Oh, let me move my head. Thanos 13, that one. Yeah, exactly. Well, well in the corner. Yeah, that one. I so one I will never forget that. How how important is cover variants for collectors? Oh, that's a that's a loaded question. Um, I mean, it's it's a trick. That, I shouldn't say trick, but it's a it is kind of a trick that Marvel has kind of pulled because they're just trying to pull in more money. And so they have these relatively scarce covers. They get these, and a lot of them are really, really beautiful, done by fantastic artists. And so because they are more scarce, um, people are willing to pay more for them. It's kind of, and there's kind of this trifecta, and Swagel talks about it too, I know, that if you can get a first appearance of a key character, and then there's a super scarce, uh, you know, variant cover. And then on top of that, it's, you know, done by an artist that you know is really really popular or is just a spectacular cover that's kind of like the trifecta and if you can find that it uh it definitely you know it can, it can go crazy like i mean the, the classic one 
because obviously in the past there weren't variant covers, but now in modern, but the classic one that has gone crazy is Ultimate Fallout 4's variant cover by Mark Dejevic, which we do have on the VV app and obviously probably mm-hmm. seen in the real world. And that is only a one, isn't it like a one in 15 or something like that, Swaggle? It's not a one in 25, I thought. I could be wrong. I think it is a one in 25, actually. It, oh, it is a one in 25. And so the rumor is, and these are hard to find, that there's, you know, 85,000 UF cover cover A first print UF4s. So the ultimate Fallout 4s for, that's the first period of miles. And so then obviously you just have to do the math to try and figure out how many of those variants there are. And, you know. Mm-hmm bunch of them probably been destroyed some of them aren't looking so good so they're a relatively rare comic and uh so that's kind of like the holy grail that people are looking for from the variant perspective yeah i find the 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 variance the variance and like the uh, ratio covers and the modern stuff is it's like it's like diving into altcoins you know you just gotta like know you know you gotta know what you're doing and you gotta like some of them are legit and some of them not so much and you know, that's a that's lot of people have done videos, including myself, where we've done like some analysis a year later on a bunch of these, you know, one in 25s. And most of the time, even if the most modern comics don't go up in value at all, you know, they go they decrease down to one dollar or even less. But the ones, for whatever reason, if there's a first appearance, even if you look at a lot of those um variant covers one in 25 a year later, you would have it would have been better if you'd have just bought 10 of the cover A's, not the one, you know, the one variant cover that you got from a, from a ROI perspective. Okay. So um, basically we have there two components, key comics is objective scarcity is objective. And the cover is at least in the beginning subjective until it gets like a mainstream. Uh, now we we were circling around the hot topic of uh, digital comics because basically we mentioned just a couple of details that are different on digital comics. So you both have videos on Vivi on your channel, um, Sleeping Comics more than Swaggle House, but also I think the latest video of Swaggle House uh, caught a lot of attention, um, also from the non Vivi per, uh, personnel. Um, so Swagger House, regarding Vivi, um, how did you find it? And are you active on it? Do you collect digitally? Um, I don't want to bring you, move you into a bad light with your <laughs> current viewers, but maybe you can tell the, the, the Vivi fam here also what your relationship is to Vivi. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm somebody who is more open minded to the idea of like digital collecting, even if it's not something that I'm like super, super in the weeds with. but I've always been kind of curious about it. I also like am into the crypto sort of world and I and I kind of understand it. So when Vivi came around and I was doing my comic book YouTube channel, it, it just felt like something to cover, you know, initially when it first came out. So um, I did a couple of videos on it, just sort of saying like, hey guys, like here's this thing, like maybe mm-hmm. you're interested, maybe you want to check it out. And then I myself got a little bit into it and then I bought some stuff and just kind of like, Dab, dabbled in it and and for me now it's like i still have everything that i've bought i've never really like traded or sold or anything and i got in fairly early so hopefully i'm not too much in the red with some of my stuff uh but then uh i just kind of keep tabs on it as far as like every now and again i, I you know i'll watch the sleeping videos I'll, I'll check in i'll just sort of see like okay what's kind of going on you know keep my finger on the pulse a little bit and then it sort of felt like with this most recent announcement um it, it kind of made sense to like kind of revisit like, Hey guys, like this is where the company's at right now. This is what they're doing. And uh, isn't this kind of interesting that they're doing this because it felt like it was a big deal, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And um, when we are talking about digital collecting uh, sleeping, why, why did you go so hard into that with your YouTube channel? You said you had a radical shift uh, at some point. Why, why did you go so heavy on digital collecting? I mean, for me, it's always like an exploration and journey. I mean, really in anything I do, um, you know, even, you know, like whatever business or whatever, I'm trying to just kind of experience some different things. And for me, I was so curious about it when it happened. And then obviously, initially, as I've said, I think my 100% goal was, oh my, can I use my knowledge here of comics and try to make some money in this kind of world as people are trying to in the crypto world which people didn't know so i mean one of the big things if you recall 
um, Paige Noller and I is that I had a lot of discussions with people because one of the first comics that came out was um, Amazing Spider-Man number one. And people just could not understand that that was not the first appearance of Spider-Man, which is a common misconception for people who just get into comics. And um, another one, of course, which which came out like, you know, maybe a month or two later was Ultimate Fallout 4, which was the first appearance of Miles Morales, who nobody knew in that world knew. So I bought like a gazillion of them. Right. So I was like, hmm, this is something I definitely with, you know, is could this be like I, I have all this knowledge of some geeky, nerdy thing. Could this actually help me make some money? But over time, I've really enjoyed it. I think it is a different and new way of collecting. I know that a lot of the physical world kind of rejects it. And that's fine. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with rejection. Um, but uh, but I, I it's its own world. And um it's, I just am fascinated by watching it evolve. Um, I, I like, I like tech. I like, I like new things. And so I'm okay with uh, going along for the crazy ride as it goes up and down. I find that, I, I, I like that. I find that fascinating. And I've been able to scratch a lot of my itches in owning a lot of great comics. I feel very fortunate, you know, from Incredible Hulk number one to X-Men number one. To, you know, I've, I have a lot of the comics I always dreamed of having. So I feel lucky in that way. And then um, in terms of continuing to collect physical ones, I do and collect here and there ones, but I've been collecting, uh, I've been reading a lot just with Marvel Unlimited. I don't have to go and buy them all. And really I was doing that anyways, because I had so many comics that are coming in each month. I couldn't get to them all. And I, I wanted to go read this one. I had to go dig it out of my long box. And, you know, I just would read Marvel Unlimited, which is fine with me on my iPad. That was okay. So it's now interesting that it's all come full circle and that you can actually buy the comics as they come out through VV Comics. I actually, and I said this in my video, I think the price point for me is still too expensive. Even, not even the, because there's two versions, right? There's the NFT version. And then there's the like, just reading reader version. Both are too expensive for me. And maybe I'm just a old curmudgeon here or whatever. Um, and that's because I don't yet understand. Maybe I'm maybe it's maybe I'm too old, right? I don't think these modern comics are gonna be worth necessarily a, a lot yet. I haven't been convinced of yet. I'm I'm waiting, I'm watching, as I've said before. But I was back in the day when I would collect comics physically, I would order them through the distributor, so I go know what I'm talking about and get them for you know, 60% off cover. And that was the price I was willing to pay as I collected, you know, hundreds and hundreds of comics, modern ones, at least. Mm -hmm. Do you also see this that way, Swagger House, uh, that it's, these are too expensive? And what do you think is the impact of this new? I mean, there are 17 comics that just came out this Wednesday on the platform, 1000 each. Uh, maybe we also have to talk about scarcity. But what what are your thoughts about this one? Yeah, I, I definitely think that even in the physical space, I think the price point is like a huge barrier of entry to like a lot of people, especially since like there's so there's so many comics and it's it's um, what do you, how do you call it? Not quite serialized storytelling, but I'm going to use that word. It's like serialized storytelling. So you're kind of like, am I really getting my five dollars worth of value out of this pretty short read? Um and this is kind of why like a lot of people have moved over to reading like the physical trade paperbacks. Cause it's like, okay, at least I know if I buy this, I'm going to get a, a full story in it and it's 15 bucks. And I kind of like am getting that perceived value out of it. And I think like, I, I don't know what the solution is. Like, I don't know if it's, if it's a matter of, oh yeah, they can just make it cheaper or they should make it cheaper. Therefore more people will read it. Like I, I have to imagine that they're doing you know, one in 25 covers and one in 50 covers, because obviously selling one comic for $50 is a lot easier than 10 comics for five. So like it, it I don't know if it works for their business model, um, but, but for sure, like it would be interesting if there was a way to bring people in into the digital space by having it at a more attractive price point already. You know, it's like, here's, here's like a, for that person who wants to still collect maybe doesn't want to have all the physical stuff everywhere and it's, you're going to save a little bit of money, you know, and you can read it in a more, you know, um, a convenient sort of way. Like that feels like it would be really attractive for a lot of people. But, but again, like, I, I don't know what their business policies are, you know, or, or what, what it shows on their end. I mean, maybe they just have to cater to a couple whales who are willing to, you know, spend the money. <laughs> I, I don't know. You know, who knows? I think we haven't but yet seen, 
because it's so brand new, right? We haven't yet seen what the end game is here yet, and it's going to morph as we see it. So, and I'm, I'm mm -hmm. specifically talking about the BV, you know, you know, they can easily, I shouldn't say easily because, because Swaggles, right? We don't know what the economics are, right? But you would think they could say, all right, look, we're going to drop it by a dollar. So it's, you know, two ninety nine instead of three ninety nine for the reader. And I think it's like six ninety nine for the NFT. So it's, you know, that's five, whatever, whatever they're, you know, I also think, that, you know, the kind of digital model is a subscription model. Can So can you pay $15 a month and then select five and get those to read every month or something like you see what i'm saying there's there's all kinds of different business models they may or may not explore that i think they can explore because it's a brand new world i'll also add this from the perspective of it all because it is so limited um so there's a thousand total of each of these new modern comics so there's 400 of the kind of regular cover a and then it kind of goes all the way down to the secret rare i think a lot of times there might be 20 40 of them or something like that not many and so I always think about, well, none of these modern comics are going to be worth anything. But if you get someone like me, who's a big Venom or Miles Morales fan, I'd like to have the full run of Miles Morales. Just like I have the full run of Miles Morales, it's volume two, I'm collecting volume three. I'd like to have, so right now they only have volume three on the um, app, right? I'd like to have the full run. And I know there's not a lot of keys in there, but I just, cause I'm a collector, right? So then when you say there's only 400 people that could have cover a, now it does get interesting. And so I think there just isn't enough digital collectors yet. And I think once there is, it's the possibility of some of these modern comics because it is so scarce. And the fact that people just like to collect things, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. And these, the price point is exactly where it should be. Yeah. So um, you, Swaggerhouse, you you mentioned in your video on Vivi, the last video, that I cannot phrase it exactly like you did, but you said that Vivi may have saved the comic. What 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 exactly did oh, you say? The, comic. The digital space. The digital space. Because. Yeah. Go ahead. I don't know if there's like another part to your question. No, no. Uh, yeah. I think it's exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know mm -hmm. if people know, but like, so, so obviously um, there's Marvel Unlimited, which is like Marvel's subscription base. Like you can read our digital comic books before, but before Marvel Unlimited was, was really like the go-to place. There was a website called, called Comixology that had some combination with Amazon. Oh. And again, it was a place to do digital reading. I mean, they weren't on the blockchain. They weren't minted. So you're, you're, you're just it's essentially Netflix. You're just kind of paying into like a subscription sort of thing. Um, and that went down, like that went defunct or whatever. And on top of it collapsing, even though it was like the main go-to place for everyone to consume digital comic books, it never really got all that popular, like, or at least as popular as it should be. And it, and it always kind of felt weird that comic books are like the one area where the digital component hasn't caught on in the same way like tv shows now everyone has sub subscription stuff you know like we we yeah e-commerce like everyone does that you know social media everyone does the digital version so it's like it was weird that like what why is comic books like the one medium or art form or entertainment space that hasn't had a, a success in the in the digital um aspect and maybe it has to do with the collecting aspect like maybe that's just the part of it like they're just it just sort of feels uh not special for a lot of people at least you know the people who are used to having like a tactile physical comic book or or whatever and so i guess i was being a little bit um flippant in me saying like oh this might save it but i'm kind of you know getting at what i think is maybe a truth that that maybe it is missing this component that is like really necessary for the digital aspect to thrive and, and then even more than that, you know, which I mentioned in the video, it's just like, I, I feel like the digital comic medium is not being pushed in a way that it should be where like, we're, we're not utilizing the medium in a way that, that can be advantageous. Like it, it feels like it should be more immersive. Like why aren't there like, you know, when you, if you play like magic, the gathering arena, or you play like hearthstone or something and you open up a pack like you get all the flashy like glowy borders and things like that like 
why aren't the covers doing this for me? Or why don't I have this aspect to it? And so there's, it feels like there's so many elements that are missing out of that. Um, and, and maybe Vivi getting into this is, is, is that first step. And that was kind of what I was getting at with that point. And still we are seeing a lot of resistance. Like whenever a, it is not only Marvel, it's NASCAR announcing a partnership with Cryptoids or whatever. It, the comments of the hardcore fans are like, we don't want that shit. We don't want the scam. Uh, stop uh, promoting this. What do you think, maybe sleep in first and then swagger, what do you think is necessary to, to is, is it only time to get these people into digital or is there no way will this always be like two separate worlds i mean i i think there i'll address it in two ways i think honestly and let's just be honest a lot of nft and crypto and altcoins are have been scams yeah and yeah. and there's you know so many exchange this i mean you just go look at the news right now right you know the sec is like suing everybody right you know i mean whether that's yeah. right or wrong <laughs> You know, they, they have a case and they're bringing it to court. So that's just the fact of the matter. Um, for me, it always comes down to, and maybe it's just my business hat, is are these businesses providing real value for their customers? And the price point is correct. That's really about what it is. And so to speak a little bit what Spago was saying, also about comicsology, obviously I was around for that. And I always thought the price, once again, I always go back to the price point. I think the price point was that. The price was expensive for those things. Um, seemingly when you could go and get a physical copy and have it and own it yourself, right? Um, there is the aspect of it didn't have any ownership. You couldn't resell it in the marketplace, but let's just put that aside for now. Um, I just think the price points were wrong. And just to, uh, to kind of quote Steve Jobs back in the day, because remember back in the day, everybody used to just download free music from Napster all the time and steal it all. But Steve Jobs said, you know, people don't want to do that. They want to pay for it and have a high quality, you know, rip of the song. We just have to find the right price point. And back then, CDs were like 20 bucks a shot, right? You get all the songs, whatever. Oh, but you only wanted one song. Um, and he did. He found the right price point. The price point was 99 cents a song, if you recall. And people paid it. People did, you know, not as people still stole stuff from Napster, and et cetera. But you know what my point is. It was, it was off yep. to the races. That digital revolution was off to the races. And now it's just subscription based. You pay your, I think, I think I have Apple Family One or whatever. I pay like 20 bucks and everybody gets all the music all the time you know, in my family. So that's what I'm saying. These, this digital world, the pros and cons of it are the distribution and replication of it is literally free. And so the amount of money that they can make off of an I, an individual piece of content, you know, replicates very well in terms of, of a profitability perspective. And so they just have to find the, that's what I'm saying. I think they will find the right, right price point. Now, in terms of the value proposition of what this company is giving, it's great. They're giving you stories about the characters that you love. And um, if you're interested in that, you can read the art is out of control. Every, every comic now is completely out of control. The art is unbelievable. Right. And so It's, we're watching this kind of economic engine take off and, uh, and we're just gotta, you know, it'll be interesting to see what, and they might, you know, they might say they might make wrong decisions and it goes out of business too. Right. Like we don't know. I will add this other thing though, about the kind of physical versus digital thing. And I, I'm not as interested in that. Um, I believe about 5% of physical people have kind of dabbled or gotten into VV or other digital collectors. That could be, you know, I just made up that number. It seems right. I think that eventually maybe you might get another 5%. I don't, you know, if someone loves uh, physical comics and they don't, they're not interested, they're just not interested. You can't make them, you can't force them. You, and I don't even think you should try. But what's interesting is just like with any emerging market, the difficulty is ex getting an audience to understand what it is and that it's valuable for them. That's the challenge that all digital collecting platforms have, including VV and Cryptoids or whatever you might. Um, and so we'll just watch that. And either they're either going to be able to do it or they're not going to be able to do it. But the compelling thing is that when you go and talk to, you know, like my daughter upstairs, you know, when she's on her, you know, whatever iPad playing Roblox and she's buying skins and digital collectibles, saving up her little coins so she can get a, you know, new backpack for her like little avatar i think at least understanding what a digital collectible is the next generation will be on board with 
Yeah. I think, I think also the big, one big component I think about that, that is sort of missing still uh, is just the, um, you know, the, the, the social component, the, and the ability to, um, I guess, show off, you know, your collection, you know, which in those, those like utility aspects, those like component, those aspects to, you know, that side of collecting, I think is like super important. Like, I know it's kind of like, you know, you don't want to have to brag about like, oh, my AF15, but that's kind of a part of it. Like there's having the status and I want to be able to go into like Sleepin's collection and see like, oh, you got this, you got this and whatever. And I think, you know, a digital space hasn't been able to provide that, um, that community aspect for comic book collectors. Like people still like going into LCS. And, and again, yeah, we, I, I don't know if you're going to convert those old physical collectors into, you know, the digital ones. But I think new people coming into the space, you know, it, it sort of needs that um, video game aspect where, you know, if I go in, if I'm playing a video game and there's like player housing or there's like some kind of MMO aspect where, oh, hey, you read the new Ultimate Spider-Man number one and there's like a Discord integration environment in here and I can go into your room and I can see your you know, your collectibles and stuff, and you have that aspect, I think that that's going to be a huge, huge uh, turning point for a lot of this. Because like once once it's known that like, oh, here's where the party's at, you know, and if you have like Vivi is the go-to place, which, you know, it seems like that's, that'll be where, where what it is. Um, I think that, that that can be a big deal, you know. Yeah, and also maybe to bring an aspect of someone who is, um, as mentioned uh, shortly before the stream, uh, someone who bought digital first and then physical, just a little bit. Um, I think many people in in the Vivi community are like that. They found Vivi, and then the first MC One comic came out, and everyone was like, "Oh, that!" Everyone knew that kind of that is a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, so everyone bought that, and and then they did not stop. So what's interesting to me is that there is a another angle on comics, which is not the same that you mentioned in the beginning of the stream or you both mentioned, uh, which is we're, we're basically, and the chat probably will give me a um, thumbs up here, we're just trying stuff out in that space. And you see that right now on the new comic with all these releases. So for example, and you guys can answer that, today they released in the morning for me in the morning x-men 97 that thing sold out in two minutes mm -hmm. why because somehow there was was in the mind i don't know if it's true that this is somewhat like a modern grail or i don't know a grail first of all is that so and a sec a second of all, did you did you participate did do you see that uh, what would you say to people that are right now <laughs> jumping on all of these different comics trying out good or you, you're just burning money i mean i think well obviously the show is hot right now and the show is good i watched the first two episodes they're really awesome i really enjoyed them so i recommend that to anybody um and you don't have to watch the original show if you can just jump into the new one if you want but um I, I, I don't know. I mean, if you're in the comic book world, there's a grail that comes out every week and everybody goes crazy and they go on eBay. And so in the physical world, there's a, I don't know if there's necessarily a grail every week, but there's one every, at least one every couple, couple weeks and everybody goes crazy. And this, this new character is going to be, you know, whatever the next Harley Quinn or whatever, you know? Um, <laughs> and so, you know, people go nuts over the, over the comics and that's fun. That's part of the, part of the collecting experience. Um, and I, you know, people spend their money how they want to spend their money. I never question that. Um, I do think that they have found, you know, I don't, I have always said, I think there's about 5,000 people on the VV app that are really, there's probably more than that, but there are 5,000 that seem to be really active right now. And so when you release something that only has a thousand, I mean, do the math, right. And, and there's a lot of people on VV that have a lot of money. So that's why a comic like that has gone and shot to the roof. We'll see what happens after a year or two years. And there's a bunch of other X-Men books that come out. Right. So, um, but I, I encourage everybody to have fun with it and, and just do the thing. But I, you know, I didn't buy one. If that's, if that, you know, if that means anything, I don't know. Yeah. I'd like to get one, but I'm not, the price point is not right for me. Right. I'm always about price point. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. Cause I, it, it's, I mean, it is like the manufactured scarcity aspect. Like, isn't it the, um, 
what is it the um secret wars number eight or is it asm 252 that when that came out it had a completely disproportionately like less amount yeah. of numbers on vv right and is that one still 252. okay 252 is that one proportionally more valuable yeah it's, so it's not i mean it's obviously in the real world there's a gazillion of them yeah it's still not a worthless comic as we well know first black suit right yeah but yeah you you added just a little bit of a key like if it wasn't a key at all i don't necessarily know if it would be as crazy as it went but yeah the manufactured scarcity plus the fact that it is kind of a cool key man it like just and back then i think they might have had you know we don't know how many active users but way more active users than they do now and so yeah that thing just blew up yeah well it's, it's interesting because it's like so in the physical comic book world tends to be the most expensive comic books are going to be the older ones because there's less of them, you know, and, and, and a lot of times they're not necessarily like a Batman or Superman comic book. They, they might be something that like maybe the people watching like have never even heard of it. It's just kind of an obscure, like random, whatever comic book with a, you know, drawn by an artist that has a skull on it. And it's just very, very rare. And that's why it has so much value value compared to say, Black Suit Spider Man, which came out in the '80s, and there's tons of them out there. But the truth, the truth of the matter is, if all of a sudden magically you wave a wand and destroy it, and then have the same census of Black Suit Spider Man physical comic books to say that random obscure Golden Age book, I guarantee you the Black Suit Spider Man one would be more valuable than that old Golden Age book because there still is this emotional desire that people have towards wanting to own that, and that's kind of what's so interesting about say like an X-Men 97 thing. I mean, like you said, they're going to make more. And so it kind of dilutes the product. But if if it can be that a modern comic book that has many physical counterparts, if it's just artificially done that, like, hey, we're only going to make like 100 digital of these, like, it, you know, you just need 101 super passionate people to, yep. to want to own it. And that's kind of what's interesting about the whole space. And it's, I, I'm not the other thing I always because a bunch of people obviously ask me today, DM, you're constantly DMing, you know, should I get this? Should I, and I I never know what to say, right? I just do, yeah. do whatever you want, right? But I'm also not so naive to know that this, once again, we don't know. Maybe that is in this new in the old world, you know, X-Men 97 is a fun comic, people buy it in in the physical world I'm talking about. But in this new digital world with the scarcity and the access that someone from Germany can buy it as easily as someone in in you know New Zealand you know, which doesn't necessarily happen with physical comic books, but you, but can in a, in a digital world. Um, we don't know what this new grails will be. And so I'm not so, um, egomania, whatever to say that this couldn't be the most valuable comic ever in the history of digital comics. You know, we don't know. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, I mean, the best example will probably, or the, the best test for this will be, probably the new secret rares that we get right now with only 40 editions. So you only need 40 people to um, basically agree that this is valuable and that they want to spend some money on it. Like me, for example, I spent $125 on a secondary for one of these new because I like the cover, right? So this, this is how I go. I, I look at the covers or oh, I like the cover. Um, so, so that secret rare is mine, right? So Miles Morales is cool, like the cover. Let's go. Um, but it, combined with maybe a bull market, because crypto space is attracted to NFTs in the latter phase of the uh, crypto space, so we will see if these will perform or not. What is interesting to me, and I would like to hear your opinion on this, is we have now not only the releases of 300 comics as they started, but we got our first two weeks of, or our first week, I think, of same day print. So it's not only that, oh, there's another comic with scarce editions and cool covers, but it's also, if I get this today, I literally get the digital version of a thing that comes out right now and I get to read it directly. So in your opinion, um, maybe swagger first how big is the deal with the same day print i mean they promote this actively yeah i think it's a like i'll speak to it just in terms of like um 
what it could mean for how they view digital comic books in the future. I think it's a big deal on that front because I think for them it, it, on Marvel Unlimited, they have staggered release um, because I would think that the business model is, hey, we still want people to go to the comic book store to get this whatever new comic book. And, and if they want to read it digitally later, you know, we'll kind of um, have them get it, you know, three weeks after the fact or whatever. The fact that they're bringing in um, same day release to me says that they're like, okay, hey, we see an opportunity here, like for us to really expand into the digital space. Apologies for my dog. Uh, we can really expand into the digital space and we want people to have it be available, you know, first day. So I, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, the, the, cyn the cynical version of me always thinks that Marvel and DC, if they could wave a magic wand, they would just go full digital. Now they probably don't really want to be in the um, single issue floppy producing comic market anymore. I mean, I think they'd like to go straight to, um, there's been a lot of comic book conversation about this, but they, they'd rather just send their uh, trade paperbacks straight to, you know, what, what, what exists now, Barnes and Nobles or Amazon bookstores and things like that. And they'd rather deal in that market. And then if they could sell the digital version, they probably want to do that. I think the, the, comic store version of this side of the business is I'm not going to say it's dying, but I'm going to say it's something that they view as like, Oh, it's probably capped, you know, as far as like what it can be. And this feels like a better opportunity for a lot of people. And, you know, I've been always a proponent of saying like with, with Marvel and DC, they have no control over what happens on the secondary market and the secondary market, you know, is frankly, probably in a lot of ways, you know, 10 times bigger than the current publishing market, especially when you get to like, you know, vintage comics and things like that. So they probably see, you know, some of this stuff and they think to themselves like, man, if we can get any of that pie of like the secondary market, you know, in perpetuity, you know, on the blockchain and stuff and any take away the evil corporate, you know, Marvel DC, that's going to get that, you know, this is a nice way for a lot of creators who write these books to, for them to make some royalty on some of the stuff that they create. Um, which is, it's already hard for a lot of comic artists and writers to have a career and, and you know, be, be able to sustain and stuff. So this feels like a really good way for them, for their business, for the future that can be sustainable, that they can make more revenue on this, that they can help support a lot of the creators. So I just, I just view it as like, this is something that they would love to have be successful. And, and that's why that they're trying to do same day release. But, the, you know, this is just me, you know, speculating. I mean, I think so, it's it's inevitable, right? Just you got to, you know, and no one and don't and it's difficult because you're talking about people that love different things, you know, and this and that. But the comment, you know, and I wonder, you know, we don't know the numbers behind it all. I actually even wonder if it, it, it could be even worse than we think. You know, it's not like the Marvel movies have been very good lately. And it's not like it's not like uh, COVID where there's extra money running around where people can go buy more comic book at the comic book store and et cetera, et cetera. Right. I mean, they might see numbers that we don't, that they're like, we kind of have to do this, which is a little scary. I'm talking about Marvel. Um, the other thing I would say is that because I think that they believe the way we believe, because initially you're like, okay, we don't want to do this because we'll cannibalize the people who are going to the comic book store, right? Um, but because I still don't think the majority of those people are going to come and do digital collecting, you're really not cannibalizing that much. You're just trying to get more people, new people, right? That person that, you know, never collected comics, but is interested, you know, whatever. So I think they looked at it as a possible chance to get new, um, new comic book, you know, readers. And I, I think, you know, and, and international, right? Any place in the world, in, in places of the world, they haven't been able to distribute before. So it's really a no brainer in my mind. Um, my thing is, is, and as you know, it's so expensive to create, print, distribute, ship, et cetera, a comic book. Um, you know, Spider-Man's a go-to, right? Batman's a go-to, but man, we want to introduce this new character. We're not so sure. We were probably initially going to only do a print run of, you know, I think of some of the, some of the different comics, you know, print run of only 20 K, right? 20 K. Well, maybe mm -hmm. we'll just digitally only release this, this, this run of a new character. Right. And so that's kind of scary. And what would that do to the physical comic? They'd be really mad, right? Physical comic book people would be mad, but it allows I think Marvel in two ways, if they could actually make more money and be more creative, take more chances, I think it could be good for comics. 
Absolutely. And uh, actually, we saw something like that already. Um, I don't know if, if there was an outrage or not, because these people are usually not on my channel, but rather on your channels, maybe. Um, we have VV fit exclusive covers, but they're official Marvel covers. So if you, let's say, I don't know if this exists, but for, for example, I am looking way more than on covers than on actual stories. So I, I collect what I like in covers, for example. So I have a lot of these exclusive covers. Uh, I don't know, did, uh, Swag Swagglehaus, did you get any feedback on, on that? Has anyone mentioned the exclusive covers uh, in the sense of, hey, now you, we have to go digital to have everything or to have access? Or are people more like, I don't care what is there as a special cover on Vivi? Uh, yeah, I, I think... I think it probably a lot of people just don't know about it. Like they've never, they barely know Vivi, let alone like the, the nuances of like, oh, there's an exclusive cover in there and, and that whole thing. Um, so on the one hand, it's like they don't care, but they also sort of just don't know. Uh, but I do think that that is a good thing for them to kind of explore. Like, you know, they got to figure out like how they can onboard some people into this space. Sorry about my dog. We, we onboard some people into the space and, and maybe you can do that by attracting people with, you know, exclusive covers or whatever. And, and like sleeping, I said before, I know you've always talked about how it's like, Oh, well, what if you introduce characters only in this space and then lead them to like the other, like that would be an interesting, yeah, at least test for them to do and see what that does. It'll, it'll throw, it'll be another day in which uh, I'll get some hate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A uh, couple of people I saw also on Twitter, they were like, um, LCS, so local comic store, I learned that, but everyone's like, LCS, people, th this is the nail in the coffin for LCS, or uh, uh, it's like the local comic store is not getting any purchases anymore because of the digital space. So first of all, is the is that thing with local comic stores, are they really in such a big, sh bad shape? Um, are they dying? Is that that whole thing going away? And secondly, is that if if we consider that only five percent maybe dabbled a little bit into the digital space, is the digital space the reason for for them going? Let's say not belly up, but maybe reducing. Is that more like uh, DVD shops versus Netflix, or are we ha having a somewhat other phenomenon here? What would you say? You go first, so way, we're gonna have my take on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I think it's. Uh, so. I think I think we've kind of hinted at it in so much as you know, it feels like there's two different audiences here. So it's probably not going to completely, you know, uh, destroy the LCS. The LCS model has their own problems, and yes, over time, it, there, there's been less and less of these stores, um, and there's there's no one actually knows like what it is. No, you know, people blame this or blame that or say this and say that it's probably a combination of all sorts of factors. Um, but I think the same day release aspect was, was kind of an interesting one. Uh, but as, as we kind of already inferred, it feels like if you're somebody who wanted to get the comic book, you know, in the store, you were going to get it in the store. And if you're somebody who wanted to buy it digitally, you were going to get it digitally. And it, th those were two different people and it didn't really affect um, anyone. Now there was an interesting Thing with Ultimate Spider Spider Man number one, which I think was on the VU platform. That was a recent comic book that, when it came out, it was like super super hot, sold out everywhere. You couldn't get it online. The only place you could go is probably eBay. You were probably going to have to pay like fifty dollars for it. Now it's kind of interesting that this VV option would exist for you in a case like that. But I do wonder if there's those people who you're presented with a situation where now you have to pay $50 to read it. Are you just going to say, I don't care. I still want the physical one. I'm going to pay 50 or will you go like, well, I, you know, maybe I'll try the digital one and I'll pay whatever it was like six or $8 or something. Again, I, I think it's probably two different audiences where mm -hmm. that person who wanted it physically is just going to bite the bullet and pay $50, even though they know it's available to them digitally. So I don't know. That's my thought on it. I mean, I think the economics of an LCS and really every LCS is no longer just an L a local comic book store. They've, they're selling funk pop, pop, Funko Pops, magic cards. They're a boutique shop and they maybe they always were, but, mm -hmm. and so 
There will always, in my mind, because we're humans and we're physical, we're not like complete virtual beings, I think be a be a, a want and a need for someone to go buy some physical stuff. Now, the question is, is do you want to just it's so economically unviable that the only way you could get it, like, for example, it might be through Amazon or some sort of, you know, online service like that. Um, you know, my my comic shop or something like that. So literally LCS has disappeared from that perspective. But I think that we've kind of reached this tipping point where the LCSs that have, are going to go out of business have gone out of business. And because they've gone out of business, it's then consolidated that business to the other. So maybe in a, in a city, there might have been four comic book stores, but now there's only three or maybe two. Maybe this pushes it over to only one in a city. I, I, I can't, you know, once again, size of the city, et cetera. But I do think there's room because of the nature of how people want to collect things physically. There's going to be at least one because they're going to want to buy statues. They're going to want to buy comics. They're going to want to buy. And so that in itself and the place and it is a place where people go to play games like Dungeons and Dragons, uh, you know, all these different board games that people play. Magic the Gathering, obviously, Pokemon, et cetera. Um, I think there's going to be a place for LCSs. I don't think that this is going to push them completely out of business. Understood. Um, I want to bring in a, user, a viewer question um, for Swagger House because uh, this was actually asked on Twitter as well as on uh, this chat. And it has to do with the physical, so where we're at it. Um, and the question is from Arthur saying, Swagger House, you said that in a few years we could see the boomers dumping their bags of physical comics to fund their retirement. Do you think digital could become a better investment than physical? Could it be? I mean, there's no way to really know. You know, I, I, I have to imagine in the comic book space, I still think that there's more reason to believe that the physical ones will be better investments because there's a longer history of proof that it is. You know, like there, there were an Action Comics number one, a first appearance of Superman, no matter what happens, I'm pretty sure a hundred years from now, people will still know who Superman is. And even if we all like are wearing, you know, our quest headsets and we live in the metaverse and stuff, like there will still be some like appreciation of like, Oh, I remember when people a hundred years ago had physical things. Like, look at this thing. Like there'll still be some novelty to it. And I would imagine that um, there's still going to be some value there. So I'm not convinced that, that, uh, that, you know, if you had a hundred thousand dollars, like, should I, should I buy the action one versus should I buy like, you know, the X-Men 97 VV stuff? Like I, I would probably say the action one is probably a better choice, but you know, uh, I, I do stand by the fact that the comic book market is going to look interest. It's going to look different, you know, when a lot of older collectors, you know, come to that age where they have to let go of some of their collections and, um, that might shake up the the market quite a bit we'll, we'll have to see um but yeah i guess that's kind of my answer so boomer's retirement is currently in physical comics i read from that comment <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's where all that's how they're funding their uh, trips to florida okay uh, good um there's also some worries in the or not only some there's many worries in the very uncertain blue ocean of digital comics and uh, maybe this this one here for sleeping um, with with the same uh, release as print day comics and also the knowledge of there are facsimiles um, of um, grails and so on. Would so some people are worried that when they bring facsimiles now of uh, of whatever grail that is not yet on Vivi and they create a digital version of the facsimile before they drop the grail on Vivi, does this become the grail in the in the digital world? Then is this like from a collector's perspective, I don't know, is this, is this then valid as the first appearance in the digital space for that grail? You know, I don't know. We don't know, right? We haven't seen that yet. It's possible. Um, I don't know if they would do that, but they probably will. They're going to have... They dropped AF-15. Swaggle may not know. They dropped AF-15. There's 10,000 of them. There's uh, 6,000 cover A's of the original, and then they have variant covers. So those 6,000 cover A's, you know, they go for around 250 US dollars right now. Will they go up? Will they go? We don't know, right? And if they drop another AF-15 version 2 facsimile, whatever they call the next time they drop AF-15, 
because you know they're going to drop another AF-15 because they're going to want the money at some point. Yeah. I think it's not going to be as valuable, whatever, because people are going to recognize this first version of 10,000 as the initial ones. You will be able to differentiate because of the blockchain and other things. I just think, but let's just say, for example, the cover A's end up going to $1,000 a shot. They drop AF-15 um, version 2 for $20 it's probably going to sell out because people at a thousand dollars, it's priced out. Most people are not going to be able to own an AF 15. That's an expensive item. I don't care what country you're from, <laughs> you know, and um, you know, people like Spider-Man. Um, and so, yeah, they might be like, you know, I'll take, the, I'll, I'll be willing to settle for the version. That's how it works. You know, in, in comics, it generally goes to FA. And if it gets too expensive, people go for the second appearance or they go for the first cover appearance. So they go for, you know, they, they kind of tone down their, you know, because it's expensive to get some of these, you know, first appearances of, you know, whatever it might be your favorite character. So, yeah, I don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. Obviously, that's looking down. From my perspective, the big thing with the um, the VV Comics and all the other stuff is, A, the business model is still in place three years later. Because, honestly, we didn't know, right? You know, one month in, this thing could have disappeared after a month, you know, and it just continues to show the relationship between VV and Marvel is very strong. The commitment of Marvel to go digital as Swaggle has pointed out. And so we need more time to pass to see what this thing is, digital collecting, digital comics. We just need more time, which isn't, people don't like to hear that, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Especially not in the digital space because many people are waiting for the, not known masses yet to to come in and buy their bags so that is definitely i think there is a lot of speculation in the space i think uh Swagler House also mentioned that in in his videos um someone here said in the in I, I wanted to highlight this comment someone said thanks to vivi's secret rare selection of x-men 97 i purchased two physical cgc 9.8 of that specific comic cover now so you oh, see that yeah, they're nine point eight. Are not not cheap. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that, but um, apparently that person definitely knows that. And um, but but we see that the impact goes also from the digital to the physical, and a lot of people want to pair up, if possible, if it's not a VV exclusive, their digital comics with a physical. So I I think um, at least. Uh, for me that collecting experience is a lot of fun also with i think you said something interesting here um Swagger house with regards to um social the social aspect i think the secondary market on vivi is a social aspect because you basically it takes you only two seconds to show that you have that secret rare of only 40 editions so you're you're in the list so this, this could be yeah yeah, I think that, that that's the most interesting part. And again, like, yeah, it's all it's all speculative. Like, as far as you know, is it, it are, are the, is everything going to get pumped up in terms of the values and all that sort of stuff? I mean, you, you have to have a ton of adoption, right? You have to have new people coming in. But, but but I think what's maybe the most exciting part about it is that it feels like the digital space. There's a lot of opportunity for even take take away like the money aspect whatever there's just a lot of opportunity for like them to build a successful social aspect to it to make storytelling of comic books more immersive to have it be like okay i can visit your digital collection in a cool way and i think if they really start to build out that stuff and add that utility like it'll be really fun for people and then that's when you're going to see you know all that people coming in and the adoption Absolutely. And we're nearing the end of the hour already. Um, so I would uh, go with Sleepin and then with Swaggle House to just um, give just a thought. It can be speculation, it can be what do you think, but like looking at the next one, three, maybe five years, what do you think this, this collectible space, the digital one is evolving into? Is this, is this something that will die with the next crypto bear market or here to stay and what what do you expect from it or maybe what do you wish for it i mean i'm biased obviously but um i i mean i think it's going to continue to grow um, and we've seen that 
And um, it'll be interesting to see. I think, you know, things like the Apple Vision Pro, you know, you can read your comic and the Apple Vision Pro, that might be a crazy experience seeing the panels really big, right? We, you know, that's something you can experience really anywhere else with a comic book and that people will experience that. So I think we have yet to see what's coming. It's exciting for me, um, but I definitely think it survived this last kind of, you know, bear market, which was important. That could have killed it, right? And so that bodes well for it. And, uh, you know, it's just to see what happens. What's your take, Swigga? Uh, uh, I mean, I, I would say I think the the you know the the optimistic outlook is it seems like Marvel is invested in this, and I, I mentioned in the video that I did. You know, I went to the last San Diego Comic Con, and you know, Marvel's footprint on their floor, as far as like their publisher being there, was like their entire setup was all VV branded. So. I think that they value this and they they look at it as something that is um, has a lot of potential. And so uh, if you're somebody who enjoys this space, I think that that's a good sign for you, right? Like Marvel as an IP is not going to go anywhere. So, you know, they're definitely going to try to make this the best version that it can be. And um, yeah, I mean, I think it's, 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 no one knows what it's going to be. I feel like, like sleep and said, it kind of survived already like a, a bear market and there's still sort of people that are interested in the space. And I think Marvel has always sort of had their issues trying to capture um, the demographic that is between, you know, under the age of 30, you know, over the age of 16. And it feels like there's like that, that th this can appeal to a lot of those collectors as well, which I think are, are, are very important for them because I think, you know, the, the physical space, it's definitely a lot of older people. I think they have, you know, the cartoons that can bring on the kids and, and, and Marvel cards and stuff, bring on like a lot of, you know, younger kid stuff. But uh, I think integration like this integration into, you know, video games, which this feels like it could very much, you know, do that. You know, Marvel just released a, a new video game that looks like an Overwatch clone, you know, and, and it's like, clearly it's like, okay, here's, here's their way to sort of, you know, do some integrations with this type of stuff if, if they choose to go down that path. And I feel like that would be very, very smart for them. So yeah, I, I think there's a lot of opportunity here for what it can be in the future. And, um, you know, hopefully they, they, uh, they take the ball and run with it. So very important in the description of this video, you'll find the links to sleeping comics, channel and also to the YouTube channel from Swagger House. Definitely uh, right now with all this intransparency on the VB Comics page, it's important to get your knowledge in and subscribe to both of these gentlemen. And uh, I think that is the best uh, conclusion here with the Mexican, uh, I think, pesos. Thanks for that, Jimbo. And uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed the talk. Um, thank you, Sleepin, and thank you, Swagger House, for coming on today and share your insights, knowledge, views with us. Yeah, I appreciate you, Patient, for reaching out. It was it was definitely a lot of fun. And uh, thank you to everyone in the chat for hanging out today and sleeping. We'll, we'll, we'll talk soon for sure.